Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, where we talk about everything from tech to films and all the fun stuff in between. In today's video, let's put the iPad Air 3 to its paces and see how it performs. It's been over a year since the iPad Air launched and has been the most popular iPad since. It's been recommended by tech gurus, tech reviewers, and probably every other YouTuber who tested the device, including myself. And why not when it offers the best value iPad for your money and gives you the features which you probably wouldn't mind paying extra for. And this still stands true even a year later after its launch. And coming down to performance, let's look at the tech specs in detail first. The iPad Air has got the A12 Bionic chip, which is a hexa-core chip. And a little more detail about this, it means that it has got six cores, which are two high performance cores and four efficiency cores. The chip also has got an embedded four core graphic processing unit and an eight core neural engine, which can perform trillions of operations per second. In layman terms, this is serious performance, probably more powerful than some laptops and mid-range MacBooks. I mean, look at this difference here. This is the Geekbench score for my Dell Inspiron Core i7 16 gigs of RAM laptop. You can compare this with the iPad Air and see how it beats in every level. The single core score is more and the multi-core is substantially more. So this is the iPad Air's performance in comparison with a Core i7 16 gigs of RAM laptop. And coming back to the iPad Air's performance, I don't think there are enough apps which would push this Air to the max besides some heavyweight games and 3D rendering applications. The A12 is not the latest and greatest processor from Apple as the newest one is the A13 Bionic which is in the iPhone 11 Pro Max and probably even that A12Z which is in the newer iPad Pros. Apple claims that the A13 Bionic is 20% faster than the A12 but I honestly doubt you'd notice any differences side by side. Let's check the Geekbench scores again here on both my iPhone 11 Pro Max and the iPad Air and see the difference. The difference between single core scores is a bit closer and the multi-core score is where you see a bigger difference. What does this mean in day-to-day -day usage? See, apps like social media, notepad, watching movies, you'll absolutely find no difference at all. It's mainly apps which are resource hungry. That's where you notice slight differences. Things like 3D rendering, 4K video editing, Photoshop, and certain heavyweight games which uses lots of resources, you make use of these extra cores. And that's where you will start noticing slight differences. Saying that, let's edit a 4K video, both on iPhone and iPad and export it out and see how long each takes. I have recorded a 4K video at 60 frames per second on my iPhone. And let's edit this using iMovie on both the iPhone and the iPad and export it out to the Photos app and see how long each takes. Next, let's talk about RAM. You know the thing that Apple never mentions it anywhere, even though it plays a significant role? I mean, Android pushes this up to 16 gigabytes in their phones. Heck, I've seen Android packaging where it mentions the amount of RAM on the box, whereas Apple totally keeps silent about this. And the highest which you can get is six gigabytes of RAM on their post PC devices. That too, on the one terabyte storage option of the iPad Pros. And most of the iPads and iPhones are stuck with a measly three or four gigabytes of RAM. The iPhone 11 Pro Max has four gigabytes and the iPad Air only has three gigs of RAM. It sure looks puny compared to the Android phones, which even have eight gigs of RAM, not necessarily the whole 16. But one thing is the way which Apple optimizes its operating system. They included lesser RAM does not cause issues. However, saying that, it still affects the number of apps which stay open in the background without refreshing. So 
you can keep an app open and pick it up exactly where you left it without having to reload it. Let's try and see how both the iPhone and iPad performs when it comes to keeping apps in the background. I have a series of moderate to heavyweight apps here and let's test how many stay open without refreshing. I've updated all the apps to use the latest version from the App Store, but mind you, some apps probably will not be optimized to use the latest version of Apple's OS. And in which such case, they might reload. But let's run the test and check it out, shall we? So, moment of truth, let's check the result, shall we? So, as you can see, they all stayed open. That's YouTube, that is browser, IMDB. Actually, IMDB used to reload quite a few times. I think they fixed it with the recent update. It's the news channel, that's the games. music app ah there you go that's adobe premiere rush that's the only one which kind of reloaded on the ipad it stayed open on the iphone so again i don't know how well optimized that app is for the ipad and adobe by default is a resource intensive app next is battery life test at 100% charge, I started watching the film Extraction on Netflix, which is about two hours long. Excellent movie, by the way. Great action sequences. And then I saw Interstellar again, which is about three hours long. Even after both of these, I still had like 50% of battery left. And I think I could watch two more two-hour films before I completely kill it. See, that's just amazing. Almost about nine to ten hours of video watching time. You can probably go through the entire Peter Jackson's Middle Earth saga without having to recharge. And you can also fast charge the iPad, especially if you have a MacBook fast charger, it'll be quicker as well. I made a video about fast charging using the 18 watt fast charger. I will link it down below if you wish to check it out. Next, I have the status monitoring app, which tells you how fast the CPU is running. And using multitasking, let's run that in parallel with other apps and see how it performs. First, few games. See, I don't use the iPad for gaming as I like to play games on a dedicated gaming machine. And if you follow my channel, you know that I am PlayStation. Always have been and always will be. But let's run a few games here and see how it performs. I have Call of Duty Mobile and you can see how much CPU is getting pushed when you're running this game. Next is Asphalt 9, the benchmark game which everyone uses in order to speed test the iPads. It pushes the iPad a bit harder than Call of Duty, but again, plenty of idle CPU performance still left. Next, let's try pushing the multitasking to its max. Let's open everything which Apple allows you to open at once. But mind you, we still have to keep this monitoring open as well. So here we go. I think that's the max. Don't even know if you can work on all of them in that view. But yeah, that's all you can open in one go. And as you can see, still a lot of idle CPU performance left. Wow, this is really so cool. So no issues here at all, battery or performance wise. And looking at the results, you really don't need to be concerned about the RAM or the processor. This iPad Air will sure last you at least five years, considering the history of Apple devices and the updates which they get. And that right there is money well spent on a gadget. Plus, 
the app's ecosystem, excellent iPad OS, and the extensive library of films, books, songs, all combined give you that complete experience which one desires from a post PC device. And the continuous software updates and the first party accessories makes the potential of this iPad even invade laptop territories. I'm planning to make a video next about doing the tasks which I usually use my laptop and I'll be using the iPad Air to do them solely and see how it goes. I will post that video soon so please be subscribed to my channel guys as you can check it out as soon as I've uploaded that. So that's it for this video. Please do let me know if you want me to cover anything else which I have missed and also please drop a like if you like this video and please comment down below to let me know your thoughts on this and please subscribe to my channel to show your support and as always thanks a lot for staying with me until the end. Stay safe guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.